Hi everybody, the topic of cleaning typewriters out, especially ones that are really filthy, is one that comes up repeatedly, and there's been talk about air compressors, so I thought we would just show you a quick, just a quick video, just a, a quick That's demonstration right. of what we're talking about. I think when we say air compressor, you're imagining one big enough to drive air tools. If you have it, that's fantastic. Uh, you don't have to have it though. Little air compressors like this. I'm not advocating Craftsman, but yeah, you can get them at Sears. Little air compressors like this are just fine. And uh, they'll have your typical tire filling attachment on there, okay, that you put on the stem and then close like this. But in a compartment here, these also come with all kinds of tools for inflating things or uh, blowing things up like an air mattress or kids toys or whatever. So you have this guy here that goes in the nozzle and it locks on and then when you turn it on this blows air out and then you have different nozzles that you can fit on the end of this here to get uh, more velocity or a finer stream and uh, I'll, t I'll turn it on. They're a little loud but they get the job done. It's not that, not that bad. So really that's all you need and once you have it you can fill your own tires too if you want to. So that's what we were talking about and then a lot of people have been talking about some different chemicals well I just thought almost comedically oh this goes with the air compressor this is a good idea before you put any solvent on a typewriter especially a barn find use your compressor and a nice soft brush like this to get the junk out before you even get it wet at all once you get it wet it's going to turn into glue depending on what what's in there so this plus a compressor is a good good thing to use. Now we have actually used all of these things on typewriters. Everybody's talking about ballastol or you know really gentle cleaners. We've used some really serious stuff on typewriters before. Yep. We, we were either A, mad enough at them that they wouldn't work that we didn't care, or B, we had a machine that really we wanted to just loosen up a little bit and see if it would work. Yeah, we had a, we had a Harris or a Rex that we used about a half a gallon of liquid wrench on because the lower action unit was seized. Remember, the whole, the whole shaft yep. was rotating in there? Yep. I, I don't know if you can get this kind everywhere. Obviously, you know, that that's like an old 3-in-1 oil can. You could just get it right where you want with a precision tip. This here is a spray. And you can get, you definitely can spray that in where you need it, and that will loosen things. This should be saved for, you know, the, the, the most, this will eat all the paint and all the decals off. It'll be clean. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I, I don't it, recommend that. It certainly will be clean. I mean, we got to talk about the difference between, between filthy and grungy versus, okay, I, I feel like I could probably have that near my kitchen and not barf. Yeah. You know, yeah. not make me sick. So Definitely want to have that away from any of the rubber on the machine. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, of course, yeah. this this does pretty well uh, on some finishes. We we won't go into detail right now, but it also looks good in your hands when you're done. Yeah, with a little, and with a little water and either a paper towel or a soft sponge, you can get a lot of grime off of a, off of a typewriter without damaging it. This does really good at dissolving petroleum based things. Yeah, you, you do can, want to try that on a completely inconspicuous yeah. spot on the back of the typewriter first just to make sure it's not going to affect the, the old layer of varnish that's on top. Right, but one, I, you know, there's different brands of this. DNL is, I think DNL bought group. This is an older yeah, one. Know. DNL Permatex might have, but yeah. um, once you buy one of these, you can use it for a long time for all kinds of stuff. You can use it in the laundry. They tell you how to use it in the laundry. So yep. for your <laughs> typewriter repairman uniform, that no one gets to see because you only put it on <laughs> yeah. when no one's there. Yeah. Oh, you mean my blue coveralls? <laughs> well, yeah. No. I have work shirts, and I get yelled at when I wash them in the washing machine if I don't get all the crap out of yeah. the washing machine. But anyway, that's just a quick idea. The these are relatively inexpensive, and you know, once you have a kid, you're probably gonna want one anyway. Oh yeah. So the basketballs. And... Yep. Yep. So that's that. So you do wanna. Get your typewriter to the point where you can actually get that compressed air in there to, to clean it. And uh, I was thinking about that, and I most of the time you have to flip tap typewriters on their back, and wouldn't it be nice if they were all just like this? I don't know how many people out there recognize this thing. You know, if anybody ever says to you, oh, I got an old typewriter with glass windows in the sides, and you say, oh, it's got to be a Royal. Well, 
I don't know about that. Here's an Imperial number 50. Pre-war, this is the f first design of Imperial typewriter that was a conventional machine. First came out in 1927. Uh, it's four bank typewriter. This one's 1939. And this typewriter has some pretty interesting features. I'm going to hand the camera to Dave yep. for you once. Would, you would probably just walk. Oh, I don't know if I. Okay. You would okay. probably just walk right past this at an antique mall oh, yeah, if you didn't you know might. if you didn't know you what might. it was. If you didn't know what you were looking at. But, uh, that comes right out. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, if I go over here, I can grab this little tab. This little tab is actually the draw band. Draw band 101. Hooks on that little pedestal. Now the draw band's off the carriage. If I come over here, press these two. I got the oh, carriage oh, oh, off. Oh, oh, oh. It's a repairman's dream. And then if I push these, I can get the entire action unit out of the machine. Wow. Why can't they all be like that? Pretty sweet, huh? Yep. Yep. Wow. Isn't that amazing? The carriage is separate. The escapement remains. The draw band's still on there. All right, you can see all the kinds ribbon of vibrator and the spools stay on the frame. Yep. Here's the here's where the universal bar, which is back here, gets hit by every tight bar. Whenever a tight bar comes up. It pushes this universal bar back and trips the escapement. And since a stuck universal bar is a fairly common way to stop a typewriter from typing... Right, because if that's stuck, these guys aren't coming up. Or if anything in its path is stuck. And putting it back together is pretty easy. You do have to... It goes back together a little more slowly. You have to make sure the action unit actually sits on these rails. And of course the idea here is that when this, when this wears out... You know, this is what you get rebuilt, and you don't have to replace the frame. Or you can change the uh, the face. Obviously, you can't change the pitch. What? But you, can you could have a face. you could have a whole mechanism with a different typeface in it. That's right. Get the, uh, get the carriage back on. Right back on there. What, it's, what if you were doing manifolding or copies, you needed different hardness platens, right? How easy would that be to swap Absolutely out? Absolutely, you could do that. No question. And there we go. So that's the Imperial and an air compressor and a bunch of stuff you probably shouldn't be using. That's right. See you later.